word is building faith in our heart to go and see the impossible becoming possible. Lord, I decree and declare as the word has been released, let the Holy Spirit breathe upon the word just like you did in Genesis. And thank you that everything the word says is ours. We receive them by faith. We take them by faith. And we will never ever be the same again. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let those that believe the word is powerful say amen. Amen and amen. Once again, our inheritance is only guaranteed by God's word. Uh, you know, if somebody uh, has a lot of stuff before they passed away, uh, maybe they has loads of houses, cars, and they have businesses, uh, lawyers would encourage those people to have their will. Uh, anybody knows what, what will is? Uh, some part of this, the country or the world, they don't believe in will. And when somebody dies and leaves all kind of stuff, people will start to fight over things. Uh, nobody wants to get the least. They all want to get the best of that somebody's, of that someone's stuff. So uh, in this country, most especially, they'll have, advise you to have a will. I want to encourage us as a church, make sure you have a will. A will. Uh, just like I've advised you guys to have life insurance, God forbid, or you, you go home so early that we'll have to start raising GoFundMe. Uh, uh, that's part of my question. Why do Christians, why do we raise funds every, every time somebody dies and then they start sending you link, go fund me, go fund me, when you could have actually have life insurance so that when you pass away, uh, 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 your, your kids and your family don't have to start raising money and borrowing money and then their life gets turned upside down just because someone died. So have a will and have a life insurance. And the church said amen. amen. Whether you like it or not, it's either you exit this world or Jesus takes you home. Those are the two things, two ways you can exit this earth. Uh, some of us are believing that when Jesus comes, uh, we will still be alive and well uh, and be 120 if Jesus tarry. But, uh, but hey, we have to plan for every, uh, every uh, in cases. Amen. We have to plan for every uh, uh, every uh, eventualities. Thank you very much. Amen. Uh, because, Krista, we get deep when we talk about this real stuff. So if you don't have a life insurance, I don't sell life insurance. So that's not what I'm saying. Some people do in this church. Uh, you can find them. Amen. And get yourself a life insurance. All right. And then also get yourself a will if you don't have one. Should you pass on, a uh, pastor don't need to gather all your children and start to try and give them who, who wants shoes, who wants uh, <laughs> his phone. No, no, no. Everything is documented. Amen. Uh, uh, praise the Lord. So uh, uh, just like someone will plan their death and have a will, the word of God is what guarantees us everything that Jesus has done. That's why the word is powerful. In order for you to advance, this is, this is the year of advancement. If you're going to advance, you are going to need to find out what the will of God is for your life. Before Jesus died, he put all of these things in his will. And it's all in the Bible. The moment you find out what the Bible says about you, that's your will that you can go and tender in any court of law. During your time of prayer, uh, you can tender that word that you have found and say, Lord, your will, your word says, by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. So I don't have to live a life of sickness and disease. So that's why the word is powerful enough for us to advance by. So we ask ourselves the question, why is the word so powerful that we can advance by it? We said because we were saved by the word. If the word was good enough to save us, who told you that whatever you're believing God for is not going to be possible by the word? If Satan could not stop you from being saved, who told you that he can stop you from getting that breakthrough? Who told you that he can stop you from getting whatever it is that God has promised us in his word. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Why is the word of God so powerful that we can advance by it? It says in verse 14 of Romans 10. It says, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom, of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? 
and now and how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things, but then they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, the Lord who has believed our report. Verse 17 says in that Romans chapter uh, 5, Romans 10, 17, it says, So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the moment we heard the word, the moment we heard the, we heard the gospel, we responded and our hearts, now we were rescued from the grip of sin. We were rescued from the grip of Satan and we were made to sit with Jesus in heavenly places. So the word could translate us. That's how powerful the word is. It can get you out of a family that is cursed, that has been uh, stuck in all kind of uh, idol worshiping in all kind of sh uh, stuff happening, maybe uh, the, like they say shenanigans happening in a family and nobody just don't have no testimony in that family. The word can give you a brand new start. That's how powerful the word is. It can, it can make the broken to be made whole. He can make the sick to receive strength by the word of God itself. All right. So uh, if you missed church last Sunday, you can go back and hear last Sunday's message. Why is the word so powerful? Number two, we live by the word of God. So if we were saved by the word, we are supposed to live our everyday life by the word of God. If, uh, if you feel like something is missing in your life, you just feel this sense of dissatisfaction. Check whether you are living your life by what you were saved by. Here is what Matthew chapter 4 verse 4, Jesus says to us in Matthew chapter 4 verse 4, uh, he says, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Please church say that every word. Every word. By every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So that, that word has sustaining capacity with it. The word can sustain you. Uh, wh whether the economy is up or down, the word can sustain you. We live by the word. We live by what the word says, not by what the world is saying. The world may be saying it's getting uh, harder economically, financially. Things are going to crash. Things are going to go belly up. House prices are dropping. Uh, in interest rates is going up. The world may be saying all of this, but God wants us to live by his word on a daily basis. That's how powerful the word is. The word can literally guide you in the midst of chaos and confusion in the word. And let the future look clearer to you when everybody else can only see doom and gloom. That's how powerful the word is. And if you, didn't, if you embrace that word, if you live your life by that word. If you let your decisions be shaped by that word, if you let your steps be ordered by this word, if you let your response to when people do, do stuff to you or, or do stuff to you, when they offend you, when they say stuff about you, uh, when, when they treat you badly at work, when, when you're being marginalized and when, when things are going on in your life, if you would respond by the word, you will continue to advance through every circumstance that you find yourself in. What the enemy meant to break you would actually become a stepping stone that makes you. And what the enemy thought will be to your downfall, God uses it to elevate you. And before you know it, you are singing a new song. God's word can sustain us in times of famine. We are living in times of famine in this world right now. Just turn on the news. You will see how bad it is getting in the world. It, it, it is a type of famine. I went to the shop the other day. This is not to uh, brag about myself. I just want to give God glory to God. And I was paying for my own shopping. You know, those self-check. Anybody use self-check here? Self-check out? Or do you guys still queue for those long queue? Did you know some shops you can just take your own scanner? And scan things, and while everybody is queuing up, you can just scan it and go out, praise God. So I was doing my own stuff on that self-scanner, and there was another lady 
um, you know, she was scanning her food. And then I saw her scan this food. And then she called the guy and said, can you take this out? Uh, I, I can't afford it. It's too expensive. So the guy took it from her and put it on where they put stuff in the shop. Uh, and then to, of, of course, go and put it back in the fridge. And the, the Holy Spirit just kind of, there was a holy anger in me. That why would somebody want to buy food and not be able to buy food? So I said to the gentleman, I said, uh, I went to the place. I didn't even ask him. I took the food. Uh, I, uh, I said, why did she drop it back? He said, because she couldn't afford it. She said, it's too expensive. How much was it? Two pounds 45. That is a farming. Two pounds 45. A, a grown human being cannot afford that. And trying to shop, that's to tell you we are in the midst of farming. So I said, no, no. Uh, I scanned it. She was already on her way out to another team. Uh, maybe she wanted to go and play lottery. I don't know what she was doing there. Uh, <laughs> but I scanned the food. I took the receipt. And I put it on the table for her. Come and see the gratitude and the joy, how, how our face lit up. And that's the kind of the world we are living in right now. People can't even pay their bills and things are getting worse. But the word can sustain us in the middle of what seemed like farming. Genesis 26. Let's see how the word sustained those that were before us. How did they survive? Farming is not new. Farming is not new. How did they survive in their own time of farming? Let, let's see uh, in the book of Genesis chapter 26. We'll, we'll start reading from verse 1. There was a famine in the land. Check this out. Besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. So farming is not new. Abraham had famine. Isaac had famine. So why shouldn't we have famine? If we are children of Abraham. So it's not just about farming. It's knowing what to do in the midst of farming. Please say this out with me. I know what to do. So it's not about farming. Farming is not the issue. We can't do anything against farming. But we can do something about what to do in the midst of farming. Let's keep reading. Beside the first farming in the days of Abraham, and Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerar. Then the Lord appeared to him. Look, this is important, verse 2. Then the Lord appeared to him and said, this is why the word is powerful. So God then gave Isaac an instruction. While everybody is trying to leave the place where there is farming, Maybe you are planning right now how you're going to get out of the UK, how you're going to relocate to Canada, how you're going to relocate to New Zealand and Australia. I don't know what your plan is, but please make sure whatever step you're taking, God is asking you to take those steps. So verse 2, it says to us, the Lord appeared to him and said, do not go down to Egypt, uh, live in the land of which I shall tell you. Dwell in this land. It doesn't make sense. Dwell in this land, and I will be with you. Glory to God. Reassurance, I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants, I will give all this land, and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham, your father. And for, for time, let's jump to verse 12. Let, let's jump to verse 12. Then, a lot of us quote this scripture, but... Isaac had to stay in the place of famine. Can, can, you, can you afford to do something that is contrary to, to the natural eyes in the middle of chaos in your life? Oftentimes, when God speaks to us, it doesn't make sense. Then the Bible says, in the place where there was famine, verse 12, and then Isaac sowed. Why did it take Isaac so long to sow in the land? Then Isaac sowed in the land. For you and I, your seed is your word now. What are you saying in the midst of farming? Are you declaring, oh, I'm broke, I'm, I'm tired, I'm depressed like everybody. Oh, everybody is going to die of this virus. Those that are taking the vaccine are going to die. And then all of a sudden they wake up. All of this uh, 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 stuff that is going on, you got to sow the seed of your word in the midst of farming. All right, so Isaac, the Bible says, verse 12, then Isaac sowed in the land and reaped in the same year. Come and say in the same year. In the same year, a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. 
So God's word has this sustaining capacity in the middle of famine. The fact that God spoke to you doesn't mean there won't be contentions. The fact that you heard from God, if you carry on reading that story of Isaac, at some point, they, they, start, to, uh, uh, they start to contend with the wells of his forefathers, of his fathers, and they, 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 he will dig some well. They will block the well, but he kept digging the well. Even though God told him to stay there, it does not mean you won't have opposition. The fact that God, uh, marriage is the will of God, doesn't mean your marriage is going to be, uh, your husband is going to be carrying you every morning and your air is going to be uh, flying like, like, like we see in the TV. Uh, uh, your, your wife is not going to be worshiping you. Your kids, uh, all of this is good in the uh, Hollywood and Nollywood and Bollywood. But in the real life, that's not what happens. So what do you do when your reality doesn't match what the word of God says, keep sowing the right seed and don't quit in the midst of famine. So this is the time for us as believers to keep sowing the seed of the word. And I will show you in the book of Mark chapter 4 why the Bible tells us the seed is the word. If you will put the seed of the word in your mouth, the Bible says you will reap a hundredfold in the same year. So when others are saying there is a casting down, you ought to be saying there is a lifting up. When others are saying it's difficult to start a business, you ought to be saying whatever I lay my hands upon shall prosper. Whenever everybody is saying, oh, businesses are shutting down, you ought to be saying, my business is expanding. I'm getting more clients and I'm, I'm, I'm getting more concerts than I know what to do with glory to God. When, the, when everybody is saying people are losing their mind, you ought to be saying it keeps me in perfect peace because my mind is saying, staying on the Lord. That's how you sow in the midst of famine. Please tell somebody, keep sowing your seed. Because a lot of time we, we twitch when we start to talk about seed in the church, but you don't realize the greatest seed anybody can sow is the seed of the word. And that's sometimes very powerful to do or very, very, uh, very uh, challenging to do. How do you speak when everything is up against you? How do you keep going like Isaac when people keep shutting you down and you knock on doors and it's shot flat on your face? How do you keep digging when they keep uh, blocking your wells? It's only the word that can sustain you. Those who hear from God, you cannot stop them. Isaac heard from God. I've heard from God. Have you heard from God in the midst of the famine we are in right now? Yes, you're hearing from God right now. When you hear what God is saying, you are positioned to keep moving in the midst of every opposition. Keep doing what God has asked you to do. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 to 10. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 to 10. It tells us not to be weary in well-doing. Don't be weary in well-doing. We're going to see the word. It's important. Sometimes we come to church. We don't even open the word. But it's good. Galatians chapter 6. Uh, uh, chapter, uh, chapter what I said? Chapter 6. Verse 9 to 10. Thank you. It says, and let us not be weary in well-doing. Please tell your neighbor, don't be weary in well-doing. Don't be weary in well-doing. Well For in due season, I think seasons are likened to uh, you know, fruits. You know, there are certain type of fruits you get in certain seasons. Uh, there are certain things you can't plant in certain seasons and expect to get harvest. Uh, so, Bible is telling us, keep sowing. Don't be weary in sowing. Don't be weary in sowing the seed of the word. Don't be weary. Uh, for in due season, we shall what reap? What, what do you reap? You reap harvest. For you shall reap in due season if we do not faint. We refuse to faint. Glory to God. Don't be weary in well doing. Matthew chapter 24, please, verse 46. Why is the word so powerful? It's because we can live and be sustained by the word. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed from the mouth of the Lord. Ma Matthew 24, 46, it says, Who then is a faithful and wise servant 
whom his master made ruler over his household and to give them food in due season. That's that word again, due season, verse 46. Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. I pray when Jesus comes, he will find us still spreading the good news, still loving like he loved, and still being a blessing to people and having enough oil in our land. Why is the word so powerful that we can advance by the word? Number three, we said number one, because we were saved by the word. Number two, because we are supposed to live by the word. The word can sustain us. All you need is the word. All I need is the word from you, Lord. All I need is the word from the Lord. All I need is the word. From you, Lord, all I need is your word from the Lord. And the Lord said to Abraham, Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, uh, leave your country. You have to realize the way God transacts is by his word. <laughs> Show me anybody in the Bible that didn't hear God speak to them. Even Jesus at baptism, the Bible says, he heard the voice telling, saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. If you're going to advance in life, you must have heard God. How can we av advance by the word number three? Is because God's word is the wisdom of God in print. Hebrews, let's see how Hebrews present this to us. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. Hebrews 11 verse 3, how can we advance by the word? Uh, Pastor, we should be able to add some things to it. No, no, the word itself has all it takes. Glory to God. And inside the word is the wisdom of God. It says in verse 3, by faith we understand that the worlds, look how powerful the word is, that the worlds were framed by what church? The word of God. If everything, the galaxies, the, uh, the stars, and the, the hemisphere, the stratosphere, all of these things that we can see were framed by the word. Your world is too small for God, not for his word to be able to frame. I'll say that again. Your world, your own world, is too small for the word of God not to be able to frame. If the entire world were framed by the word of God, all you need is just one word from God. And that word can turn your life in the right direction. He says, uh, by faith we understand that the world were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. But pastor, this is what I can see before me right now. It is easy to keep saying what you can see. It takes another level of dimension to begin to speak what you want to see. It's easy to speak, oh, I'm weak, I'm sick, I don't have any money in my bank account, nobody loves me. But it takes another dimension to start to speak, I am accepted into the beloved. I am loved by God. I know who I am. Uh, God has not brought me this far to leave me. Come on, that's the dimension we ought to be operating in, in the midst of all that we are living in in this world right now. That's how we're going to keep advancing. So we understand the words were framed by the word of God. Psalm 119, please come to Psalm 119. I, I just want, I'm praying that there will be a momentum of the word in our midst again. That we will give the word the rightful place that it belongs in our lives as believers. Psalm 119, verse 98. It says, you, through your commandment, his commandment is made up of his words. Make me what? Wiser. Wiser than my enemies. <laughs> Can you afford to be wiser than your enemies, anybody? Anybody want to be wiser than their enemies? 
that before your enemy launches one attack, you already five step ahead. Glory to God. That's what the word can do. He says, your commandment, which contains your word, make me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. Uh, let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Why, how can we advance by the word? Is because the word is the wisdom, is the wisdom bank of God. That's why we can move in the midst of opposition. That's why we can make headway when it seems like road are shot against you. Second Corinthians, uh, Second Timothy, please. Chapter 3 and verse 15. 15. From a holy, from a, a child. I'm trying to get there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God for the word. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 15. It says and that from a child uh, you have known the holy scriptures, which is what? Able to make you wise. A believer that lacks the word is going to act foolishly all the time or most of the time. He said, from a child, that, that scripture has, uh, is, 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 been, is, is able to make you wise unto salvation. It's wise to be saved. It's wise to give your life to Christ. It's wise to let the Lord be the shepherd of your life. To realize you, the, the opposition that the world is up against right now, if you don't have Christ in your life, you are subjected to crisis. Wisdom is, Jesus, be my Lord and my Savior. I can't live without you. I can't do anything without you. I need you in my life. And it says that word is being able to make you wise unto salvation through faith which is in Jesus Christ. The word is the wisdom bank. Let's see another one. Second Timothy, please. Chapter 3 and verse 16 to 17. Ha, ha, Pastor, I, I thought the word is just what we read and we listen to our church. I, I didn't know the word is so powerful. Yeah, that's the point. We want to let, let there be a stirring up in our heart that when we read the word again, we are looking for stuff and looking for answers. Glory to God. Uh, 2 Timothy 3, 16 to 17. He says, all scriptures is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And then verse 17, that the man of God, the woman of God, may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. We, we've said it before, wisdom is knowing what to do and actually doing the right thing. God's ways are contained in his words. In his word, you want to know how God operates? Uh, get familiarized with his word. I'll give you Psalm 103, verse 7. Psalm 103, verse 7. The Bible says, he made his ways known unto Moses and his act known to the children of Israel. If you want to see the ways of God, which is the producer of his act, you've got to know his ways. Come and stop looking for just God's act. Know God's ways so that you can also be a producer of his act. That's what the apostles said. They said we give ourselves, ourselves to prayer and the word. So when they see somebody by the beautiful gate, they know what to do. When they, when, when, when they were confronted by the authorities, they knew what to do. Why? Because they gave themselves to the word. Please tell somebody close to you, give yourself to the word. Give yourself to the word. You will always know what to do. Did you remember Jesus told them that when you are before the authorities, you will need to think about what to say? Because at that moment, the spirit will give you what to say. And if you read the book of John, the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit will bring to our remembrance that which Christ has spoken to us. And if you want to know what Christ says, you've got to read the word. You've got to read the word. As I close, I'll close on this one, on this wisdom bit. God's wisdom is a mystery. Please write this down. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7. God's wisdom is a mystery. We cannot explain it, but you cannot deny its evidence. 
when it's at work in a, in a man or woman's life. God's wisdom cannot be explained. Can you, can you explain how God formed the earth? Uh, you know, when we were growing up, we were looking for the pillars that hold the heaven. You know, you know sometimes you're looking, you go to the sea, you will see that it looks like it's going like this. And then just about when you move closer, and then it's like it's like this. And you just can't fathom, oh, hallelujah, it's indescribable. It's so huge, but yet God formed everything by his word. God cannot be studied, but God cannot be boxed up still. You can study him because of his wisdom. Glory to God. That's how we advance in the middle of opposition. God's wisdom is a spirit. Please write this. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17. You can, you can study this on your own. God's wisdom is a spirit. We saw that uh, during the anointing service, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2, that the spirit of wisdom was upon Jesus Christ in prophecy. Glory to God. If you have the wisdom of God, it doesn't matter the stuff you are up against. You will always go through circumstance and you will never be stuck in your life. That was why Jesus could not be stuck. He always knew what to do. He needed to feed 5,000, not just once, twice. But he always had the answer for every circumstance. So I want to encourage us. Maybe you feel like your life is full of so much mistakes, so much taunts in your life that you don't even understand. It's time to begin to approach the word and say, Lord, I thank you as I study your word. I have access to your wisdom. I have access to your ways. I have access to the deep things of God that, that, I, that can make me to go over in life and not be under circumstances. Jesus, as the revealed word, operated practically under the spirit of wisdom. Mark chapter 6 verse 2, for your own note. Mark 6 verse 2, I'm, I'm, I'm closing. The wisdom of God is the generator of signs and wonders. L let's see that Mark chapter 6 uh, verse 2. Mark 6, 2. It says, and when the Sabbath, when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished. All he was just doing was just teaching. Saying, where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this? And look at the consequence of God's wisdom. Uh, wisdom is this, which is given to him that such mighty works. Did Jesus say, uh, greater works shall you do? Yes, he did say that. How are we going to do greater works? Is by the wisdom of God. If Jesus did greater works or mighty works by the wisdom of God, because that's what they said in that verse 2 of that Mark 6, uh, they said this wisdom in, in, uh, uh, is this which is given to him that such mighty works are performed by his hands. So there is a direct correlation. There's a relationship between the wisdom of God and signs and wonders. <laughs> you think signs and wonders is just about, oh, just praying and laying hands on the sea? Come on. It's time for us to see the word of God as the seed of wisdom. You have the word of God in you. Lord, I thank you that I know what to do concerning these financial situations before me right now. Amen. That's you praying the word. Lord, I thank you. This job situation that is before me, this mountain in this relationship, thank you that I have the wisdom of God. Before you know it, you begin to see mighty works being done in your life. As I close, creation is an example of God's wisdom in operation. Let's close in Proverbs chapter 9. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 22 to 31. Proverbs 9. Please say this out with me, church. I always know what to do. Because I have the seed of the word living in my heart. My heart is filled with wisdom. I don't make foolish decisions. I make wise decisions because I'm advancing by the word. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 9, 
uh, verse 22, and then we jump to verse uh, 31, and then we, we, we wrap it up there. Uh, in fact, let's, let's read from verse 1. Wisdom has built a house. She has hewn out the uh, seven pillars. She has slaughtered her meat. She has mixed her wine. She has also furnished her table. She has sent out her maidens. She cries out from the highest places of the city. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. As for him who lacks understanding, she says to come to him. Come, eat of my bread. Uh, we ate bread this morning, glory to God, and drink of the wine. We, we drank one. It wasn't alcoholic. In case you were expecting alcohol, we, we don't serve alcohol here, praise the Lord. <laughs> you, have, uh, you, you have drink of the wine I have mixed. Forsake foolishness and live and go in the way of understanding. A foolish, verse 13 a foolish woman is clamorous. She's simple. That's not a woman here at Chosen Church. A woman here are very wise. Glory to God. And knows nothing for she sits at the door of her house on a seat by the highest places of the city to call those who pass by. This is wisdom. Uh, who go straight on their way. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. And as for him who lacks understanding, she says to him, Stolen water is sweet and bread eaten is in secret is pleasant, but he does not know that the dead are there, that the a guest are in the depth of hell. So wisdom is calling us this morning. Wisdom is beckoning to us as believers. And God's word, every time you wake up in the morning and you have two options, should I check my social media or should I check my word? What the word of God says, I encourage you to check what the word says. <laughs> Why? Because that's the spirit of God calling you to the place of wisdom. And I'm praying over us that in this season, our perception about the word will change. The word will no longer be what you put under your Bible or what you just uh, uh, go to when you have problems. The word will be what you live by on a daily basis. How do we get sustained in the midst of famine? Is by the word. We saw Isaac sowing in the midst of famine and gaining and getting hundredfold just by the word. How are we going to make investment, investment decisions in this time? How are we going to change career jobs and career paths and all of that? It's by the wisdom of God. Let's pray together as we round up. Father, our heart is to continue to be in a place where your word takes priority over this world. Lord, we are not going to be moved by what they are telling us. We are moved by what your word says. Lord, I pray over us as a church that even in the midst of all of this prophetic word of advancement you've given to us, we will give your word the rightful place in our heart as we make decisions, as we relate with people, even as we go through life itself, we will allow your word to be at the top of our priorities. Lord, we thank you that we know we are sustained by your word. Lord, for those that are feeling exhausted in our midst this morning, we thank you there is a re, uh, restoration and reinfiguration of strength in the name of Jesus. That as this word has gone forth, strength is coming alive in the midst of every weakness. We thank you that every opposition is leveled out because the word is quick and alive and active in us. We thank you for the produce of your word, for the pr product that your word brings about in our lives. And we say thank you because we know this is the best seasons of our lives. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Let the believers say amen. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand of praise for his word that always guides us in the midst of every family.